Here we are. All right, welcome to the second call of the Freedom Living Summit. We are interviewing slash having a conversation with Zena today. Very excited. We're just gonna, yeah, hi Zena. We're just gonna take a moment to settle into the space, to take some deep breaths, to ground our energy, to bring our presence here and now so that we can give our full presence to witnessing this conversation and also our full presence to whatever comes up in us personally as we witness the conversation. And we'll have an update in the guidebook, integration guidebook after this conversation as well for some prompts to support you in integrating anything that comes up. But we'll just start by taking oh, a couple deep breaths, a couple deep, deep sighs, and maybe wiggling the spine a little bit and just feeling the body, bringing our presence and awareness into the body from the feet, the ankles, the legs, the hips, the torso, chest, the shoulders, the arms, the neck, the head. We're closing the eyes if you want to do that. Start to soften the shoulders, the jaw, lips, the tongue. Feeling the sweetness of being present, even if we're on the replay, just being present with each other in these conversations and this energy. Slowly bringing it back to stillness, placing both hands on the heart. Taking notice of anything that you feel in this moment, anything that's coming up. Giving yourself a moment of presence. Setting the intention you have personally for this call, for this conversation as the witness. Thank you for being here. Thanks for bringing your presence to witness this conversation, breathing life into this space. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Oh, I feel excited. I feel giddy and excited. Okay, so I get to introduce you to one of my <laughs> best friends. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe you. Like, I don't know, you just popped into my life as this powerful force of love and kindness and awareness and grace. And you feel like an angel on my shoulder, whether we're in conversation or in voice messages or we haven't talked for a few weeks, but you really do feel like an angel on my shoulder. That's the way I want to describe you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's an yeah. introduction. Thank you. I can just recall, like, there's a lot of voice messages that we've had back and forth. I can recall one in particular when I first got back to Australia but there's been so many where I just end up sobbing, crying, talking to you because you feel like such a, you are such a safe space for me to be all of my emotion and my water and rawness without any constraints. And that precedent was set by the first time that we met, which was in a women's container. And I was holding a weekly integration call during that online course and you were in my group and the first call that we had together, we all, I think everyone had an opportunity to, opportunity to share. And I don't think we had to share, but you like, you were there to share, but you were crying and there was so much emotion and I could feel so much depth in you. And it was, this is my interpretation. It was as though you didn't know if the space could hold your depth and the depth of what you were feeling and experiencing. And I remember like just feeling so much compassion because I think you said like I'm sorry I'm crying and I was like do not be sorry that you're crying like you don't have to be sorry that you're crying here 
this is the perfect space to be held. And actually, I remember saying to you, I want to see all of you. I want to know all of you. And I want to see and feel and experience that depth as well. So that was the starting point of our relationship. And that's what it's been from my experience the whole time I've known you. And you're just a gem of a human with a lot of gold to share. And you've lived a lot of life and you've been on your spiritual journey consciously and intentionally for a decade and a half. And you have some really valuable things to share. So I want to open the conversation by asking you the question, what does freedom mean to you? And I know we kind of talked about like we throw around these buzzwords and Freedom doesn't really feel like a buzzword just yet, but I'm sure it'll become one at some point. And it's good to know through your lens, what's your experience of freedom? What does the energy of freedom and living in freedom mean for you? Hi. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, freedom. I think freedom for me, I'm like tearing up. You guys probably going to be tearing up during this call. And um, also, Amy, thank you for probably being the first person or first friend I ever had that said, come on, bring it on. <laughs> Crying is exactly what I want to see from you. If you're sad, that's what I want to see. Um, so, yeah, and that brings me back to situations where crying was not okay. And, yeah, really blessed that you said that. And that was sort of my first introduction to women's circles as well was like, crying is okay and I'm like oh yeah women do cry we cry an awful lot and we like swallow it down bite it down run away yeah but thank you um <clears throat> freedom I think for me personally from my completely like subjective point of view is um freedom from my own mental monologue dialogue monologue there's no two people in there it's just one person my um like the commentary um, about whether or not I'm good enough to be happy, whether or not I am enough to be happy. So all of this mental noise telling me, oh, you have to lose weight, you are not good enough, you're not providing enough for this and this and this, but to just say that I am enough or I, can, I choose to be happy, even though there's this like constant jabbering inside my head about with reasons why I shouldn't be happy, but actually I can quiet those down and I can choose um, no matter what's going on in my life that no, I, I choose to have a good time right now. <laughs> I choose, I choose that. So freedom from my own, my own self, freedom from my, from my internal uh, world to just step into peace and step into joy and step into happiness whenever I can because I I choose it. That's my freedom choice. So yeah, does that make sense? It makes total sense. Okay, good. <laughs> it makes total sense. And I also like personally I have quite a bit of context of how you've gotten to the point of being able to say, you know, freedom to me is making that mental choice. And I know that that's not that doesn't just happen. You don't just make a decision in your mind one day. I'm just going to choose from now on that when I want to be happy, I'm happy. And if I don't want to be happy, well, then, you know, I'm going to allow myself to be sad, but I'm just going to choose. And you've had a massive journey to get to the point of having the personal sovereignty within your own mind and psyche and consciousness to make that choice and then have your body be in alignment with that choice and your emotions be able to come into alignment with that choice. Um, and I want you to be the one to introduce, I guess, what catalyzed your awareness around all of this and share a little bit with us about the journey to get to that point. And then we'll go into chatting a little more about the retreat that we went to together. Okay. Um, so about... 15 years ago um do we want to start at the nitty-gritty right at the very beginning we can like not go super nitty-gritty just yet okay no yeah. nitty-gritty and then we'll like years. come back to nitty-gritty yeah. but if nitty-gritty feels important to share in the moment share it i mean no <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, about 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I went blind for three months and um, there was a lot of uncertainty around that time. And when I, I didn't know why I was blind for a very long time. Um, but when they finally found out um, and then going through the process of all of the different specialists I needed to go to, the prognosis was pretty, the prognosis was bad. Um, there was no hope. I was given no hope. Basically, I was told, go home and take drugs. And uh, anytime you're in pain, just take those drugs. But there's, you're not going to get better. You, you will get worse, in fact. Um, and... Uh, and they also said, and in, in, in some time, we will have to do really invasive deep brain surgery that is extremely risky. Um, and they did do a few surgeries, but not to remove it. There was one to test the intracranial pressure and another one to do a biopsy um, on the brain tumor itself. Um, yeah, and then I just went home and they put me on a protocol of sort of monitoring which I've been on since since that day. Um, but it changed my entire life. I lost my job. I lost a lot of friends. I was also in a foreign country than the one I grew up in, maybe two and a half years after I moved here. This is when this happened and it all fell, the rug fell, uh, the rug was pulled from under me. Um, and I suddenly found myself a stay-at-home mom, which was had never been on my radar ever. Um, and I found myself really struggling to understand why. And um, yeah, the, I think the question when these things happen and you're not fully in your spiritual journey, the question why is huge, it rings in your ears. Why is this happening to me? It's very victim mentality. Why? Why me? Um, why is this my life? Um, so basically one day I Googled, it's, oh, the brain tumor is in my pineal gland. Uh, <laughs> maybe that was important. Basically one day I came home and I was like, I'm going to Google this, even though people had literally told me, don't Google. Don't ask Dr. Google. Doctors had told me, don't Google. Um, because it's woe and um, the information's not good enough, uh, all of this stuff. And I was like, no, I'm going to Google. So I remember I had my computer propped up on the piano and I just Googled pineal gland or tumor in the pineal gland. I'm not sure which one. And my, I think my daughter was with me. She was like tiny little baby, not tiny, but she was adorable. I can see her ringlets in my head. Um, and the first hit was Joe Dispenza. Um, and I had no idea. My mom, I think my mom had bought me the book, The Secret, maybe half a year beforehand. And I'd read it and was like, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> I literally was like, what, this book is weird um, and put it away. But Joe Dispenza came up and Joe Dispenza is a rabbit hole. He's got so much information. Um, I think I watched 10 interviews with him uh, about the pineal gland and its uses and everything, um, its purpose in the body and its connection. It's sort of a jumping off point from the spirit realm into the human or the human into the spirit Um and I learned that the pineal gland is uh, a tiny, tiny, tiny organ in the body. It's so small, but it has the most, the big, largest blood supply of any organ in the body. The blood supply is disproportionately massive compared to the heart even. Um, yeah, so much information around it. And it just kind of broke my world open slowly, but surely about how else I could be approaching this illness, my illness or my experience. I could be approaching it completely differently and I could be approaching it with love and kindness and gentleness and acceptance um, and also with hope. Joe Dispenza gave me hope. Um, which is something I was deeply lacking at the time. So, yeah. How long That's would you it. say? <laughs> That's it. 
it's a pretty big it yeah <laughs> how long would you say it it's probably hard to like give a definitive answer but roughly the journey from being given the diagnosis the prognosis finding out about Joe Dispenza, learning about the pineal gland, and then actually starting to feel, like genuinely starting to feel hope and acceptance for your experience. Yeah, it wasn't definitely not overnight. It was like Joe, because well, he, he takes a bit to getting used to. I don't know if you listen to his meditations, but he's using, he calls it like the universal voice or something. He's using this. And I was like, I don't know. I feel like I'm being like, um hypnotized right now I don't know it was weird but I did okay um until I started feeling real hope and and joy again maybe a year after finding joy to building myself up again and I found other people as well like um Byron Katie and uh Eckhart Tolle building myself up to feeling that when I woke up in the morning, I wasn't in fear state. I wasn't in crisis mode. It took me a long time to get there. And in that time, I was in and out of different doctor's offices and therapies and stuff as well. So, yeah, but it was a it was a while, maybe even longer. I don't know. It was, it was a long time ago. <laughs> mm. Maybe even longer. it was like step by step, bit by bit. Am I allowed to feel better? Can I feel better today? Am I allowed to feel better? This has happened to me. Can I give myself the permission to feel better today or feel happy today? Um, shouldn't I be worried about what's going to happen in the future? Because worrying gives you a sense of security. Like you're like, okay, if I worry about it, then I'm prepared or so something like this. But can I allow myself to feel peace? Because yeah, it took a long time, but I did. I feel like I did. <laughs> what does that process look like for you now like do you often uh, is the pattern of feeling hopeful and peaceful and giving yourself permission to feel hope and peace is that so super well ingrained that that is just your default or I mean I wish <laughs> I wish but I do um I would say it's five percent so 95 percent of the time my default is hope and and peace and personal sort of peace but five percent of the time I'll wake up and be like I think I need to go to the hospital today I feel very unsure I feel worried I feel um like I need support outside of myself to get myself through this like it's not it can't be just an internal job today I need to get input from from the world to say no you're all right you're going to be okay. Um, yeah. So it, internally, it can, I can, I can get very dark still. It's, uh, I think maybe I'm just, it's just being human probably, mm -hmm. but yeah, it happens. Still human. Yeah. We're all still human. Yeah. And that's like, I guess I just want to emphasize the point that it took time to start to feel the hope in the first place and like yeah. genuine hope because there's one thing to I think with all of this work like with Joe Dispenza's work in particular but I've experienced this myself where this feeling of like I'm like I know I'm convincing myself like I don't actually believe it I know I'm telling myself that I accept the situation but I know I don't actually accept the situation but I'm like trying to control it by telling myself until I believe it. And there's this internal resistance and frustration and victimhood of like, but you don't actually, I don't want to believe that. And like, I have a lot of reasons to not yeah. believe that. And it doesn't feel valid. So when we say like genuine hope and acceptance, like this difference between yeah, totally. convincing ourselves and embodying it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think my internal voice is very strong. She's a great reasoner. <laughs> she, she's she got so many reasons um, why, why she shouldn't feel uh, good today. Um, so yeah, it's a very long time. It's almost like the, I have teenagers. It's almost like the struggle between a parent and a teenager. It feels that way, this internal monologue being like, yeah, but, yeah, but, 
uh, and then the mom being like, I see what you're saying, but we can still do it this way. We can still do it this way. Even though you've got all these reasons, we can put them down. Yeah. Yeah, convincing yourself. I mean, that programming is very deep. And especially, especially when the outside world is telling you that the programming is real, that you've got a brain tumor, it's going to take you down, you're going to need massive brain surgery, you might be disabled forever after it, there's a high likelihood, um, you will die, you early, it, you know, all of this stuff. And people who are in positions of authority telling you that over and over and over again. But then to go home and be quite radical and listening to, um, oh, what's her name, Esther Hicks, <laughs> in the bathtub, trying to bring joy into your body. I used to listen, I used to have a bath every morning after my family left the house and listen to Esther Hicks. Just listening to her ramble on about everything, about how to move from this vibration to just a little bit better. Can you move from sadness to anger? And I was like, I don't know if I can bring anger. Do I even have anger in my body? I think I can bring anger and I would be like, yeah, going, okay, I can get angry about this situation. Fuck this brain tumor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it you've too. built a serious level of self-trust and autonomy and sovereignty within your own mind. And also like it's been an incremental journey over 15 years. Like this is a decade and a half of work yeah. Yeah. to get to a place of being able to say like, yeah, 95% of the time the hope and the acceptance and the gratitude for life is ingrained and 5% of the time I'm not quite sure. And I may also like make the conscious choice to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like you're collapsing and falling across the line. It feels like I'm consciously choosing Today, yeah. I do want to go to the hospital. I want to see a doctor. Today, I, you know, there's pain or whatever it is. Like, I, I do want to go and see someone and get some reassurance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think a couple of things there. I was highly motivated to be a good mom. I didn't want to be a mom that died early. I didn't want the memories of me to be in bed, bedridden, mopey. I wanted them to have a happy childhood. So I was, I was motivated when I started to see the light, I was very motivated to move towards it. Um, so that really helped. Um, and also, yeah, this, I, something I learned is that I can ask for help when I need it. When I really need it, I can reach out and say, I'm having a really hard time today. Can we go for a walk together to my husband? Can we go for a walk together? And if we do stupid cliche cringy things like okay you tell me 10 things you're grateful for and then I'll tell and we'll, we go backwards and forwards and then we like we'll fantasize about a future together which is just radically amazing and wild and then we end up laughing and because I know that I don't want to stay down here where I don't have hope I want to move it up. so I don't know asking asking other people to help support you when you need yeah. it something I wasn't used to before, shied away from, definitely hid from. I can do this all myself. I don't want to be a burden. Huge one for me. Don't want to be a burden. Yeah. I want to bring Bernadette into the conversation and introduce the journey that we went on of the retreat. So Bernadette and I held a retreat in Wales earlier this year and Zena came and you already knew each other from the online women's community, right? Yeah. Yeah. But at first time, like meeting in person and also obviously, um, I think our second time meeting in person. Yeah. And like deepened all three, like all three of us. It we were saying before we started the call, we were chatting. The experience of the retreat, it feels like this three-way thing with our relationship. Like I got to see Bernadette in the way that she was holding you. I got to see you in the way that you were showing up into the retreat and the space. I got to see what you were navigating. It deepened our relationship. Bernadette and I, like it just, it was this beautiful, um, yeah, expansion 
and like real fucking shit like it was real we're not playing here like this is a real thing that needs to be deeply considered and we need to dig even deeper in listening to our intuition and trusting ourselves and also trusting each other and you've just explained like in a very short way without going into the nuts and bolts 15 year journey to ingrain those patterns of self-trust and sovereignty and seeing the light at the tunnel and knowing that you can shift your energy and that you can bring your energy up just one more frequency band can I go from sadness to anger and you've built the self-trust of I know I can I can do that and I can make the choice and I can reach out for help when I want to and I also know my own personal strength in a really big way and then you decided to come to this retreat and even just to get to the point of choosing to do that is massive. I mean, it is it is for everyone, but with the added layer of the health dynamic for you and the ceremony that we did, it was, there's that extra layer of intentionality there and thought and um, I don't know, it was all very, like there, it was light in the sense that we trusted each other and we trusted ourselves and it was also deep and serious in the sense that you can just be flippant so I've been quite vague there but I want to pass the conversation on really to you two to kind of talk about how that retreat experience was for you both and maybe start Zena with you just explaining what was the process of you like deciding to come to that retreat and arriving there and meeting Bernadette and then I'll let you two flow from there um well <clears throat> I had never been to a retreat like this before never done anything like it before um and I had um I I'm so lucky to have a husband that basically says yes to anything I want to do he gives me the freedom to be like if I even mention something he'll be like okay I'm buying the tickets and the next day he'll give them to me and I'll be but I didn't know oh I, Okay, okay, good, thank you. <laughs> um, so that happened. But yeah, I, I felt intuitively ready and intuitively called to go to this specific retreat um, more than any I had ever been in contact with before. And that's because of you too, but also because of one little photograph you put up on your, um, on your like event. And I was like, oh, I can go to this one. I feel comfortable. I can go here. I it's not out of my wheelhouse. I look at that photo and I think, yep. <laughs> so that was my my journey around it. It was a bit of it, it was a very because it wasn't like five star flashy. The whole thing. It was simple yeah. and grounded simple. and homely. Yeah, it was. It was like I've been in those spaces before. This is not out of my wheelhouse. I can I can yeah go and feel comfortable to be myself in this space if it had been some flashy resort I would have been very nervous and awkward and feeling like I, I'm saying the wrong things I'm yeah what about you Bernie what did you how did you feel about me well I would just I mean love at first sight but I would love to just like circle back real quick for those who might be listening. Cause you know, I know we in a very Cliff's Notes version started the journey with your, you know, health concerns, but from the point that you found Joe Dispenza to the retreat, can you give us just some like Cliff's Notes, like speed us up of like, what were your physical symptoms? What was actually shifting in your body? What was changing? What wasn't? And even more so, what was your, because you were changing your vibration, how was your interactions with the doctors and the advice they were giving? And how did that help you discern what was right for you and what wasn't? I think it's a really important piece to like really feel mm -hmm. what, because, you know, we felt where you started, but like, where did you end up when we met, you know, it's what, almost yeah. a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I have to say that slowly I made some 
slowly I made radical changes to my lifestyle, very radical um, and completely against the grain. I don't know if you know anything. I live in Norway. I don't know if you know anything about Norwegian um, food and diet, but it is cheese and meat based. <laughs> Basically cheese and a lot of meat. Um, so I decided to go vegan, not only vegan, but raw vegan and just frighten the pants off anybody I spoke to. <laughs> um, so Not very I, I went, Norwegian. Oh my gosh, no, no. It was, it was, it was a big deal. And um, my husband comes from a, a sheep farm, so even bigger for that side of the family. They had no idea. They thought I was going to die. Um, yeah, but uh, so I made personal choices towards my health. I took myself off medications. They had me on a heart medication um for uh migraines for the migraines but it was I, I don't know they I, I just felt like I was some kind of weird experiment that they were oh we'll try this we'll try this oh it, we'll put you on this drug but you have to stay in hospital while we put you on it just in case you die this kind of stuff and I was like got to the point where I started refusing treatments I started refusing things like um Oh, we're going to do, give you another MRI, but you have to have this contrast material in your bloodstream to do it. And I was like, no, I don't think I want that. We know we have, I have a brain tumor. What do you need this contrast for today? We had one of those six months ago. Like, if you need it, you call me back in for it, but I'm going to say no. Um, and instead of going into the appointments, I started saying, we can just have a telephone call. I'm not going to travel to another city for five hours just for you to tell me what's going on I know what's going on with me we can do it over the phone and started sort of saying no 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 more and more um and I think that was the catalyst for that was one of the operations I had where I really felt that they were out of control this is like the hospital the major neurological hospital in Oslo probably the best on the planet I would say um and they hadn't taken me in to tell me what was going to happen beforehand. Um, they botched the, uh, the stitching of the area. So I was leaking uh, cerebral fluid and blood onto my pillow. I was vomiting um, continuously throughout the entire process. I was just like, I don't think you guys know what you're doing. At the same time as learning about the law of attraction and the other laws of the universe and the pineal gland and everything. I was like, there's something else here. This one is not my, this is not my path anymore. This is my path. Um, and I think, um, yeah, they, it was very top down. I was not as much as I could. I took back my own uh, res responsibility about my health with them, but I couldn't tell them um, that I wanted to take this drug instead of this drug. They, they, one, one woman actually told me to leave the office when I said, how about we try this? Um, and she was like, actually our uh, team, uh, what is that in English? Our appointment's over now. I'm sorry, you're going to have to leave. And I'm like, I just wanted to talk openly about my own body and what chemicals were going in it. Um, so yeah, they were not ready for me. <laughs> Once I started to take things back once I started to take back my own sovereignty they were not ready for it and yeah that's kind of how it was going I don't know if that answers your question Please oh my on. god no it's perfect because you know this is this is when we met yeah. you know this is when we met you this this whole history um and journey that you've been on, I got to meet the empowered, sovereign, fully embodied, deep wisdom carrying Xena that is very okay with holding and being the witness of the fact that like, I have a brain tumor and I know that that can mean something and this is how I'm going to hold it. And I'm not, I'm not asking for anyone's permission. <laughs> yeah. And it was so beautiful because, you know, I will just say this, when we start delving into the realms of deep personal work that does involve, you know, 
ethnogenic medicines. Um, I would say our training is very much about like, you know, we do our intakes and you get, you get them back and you go through them and, you know, because everyone wants to stay safe and everyone wants to, you know, do the right thing, the right thing in the name of safety, which absolutely. Um, but it's, I think a teacher for me as a result of your personal sovereignty and your deep journey of cultivating your inner wisdom and knowing that voice like you knew your own heartbeat um for me to really trust my inner wisdom and knowing that when I see a brain tumor on your intake form everyone in my world (laughs) all of my training is like oh that's going to be a hard no but no we knew better Um, and so it was this beautiful dance that you and I got to do together. Um, and Amy got to witness that and hold space. It was just this beautiful triad of, um, really delving and into the, into the, the cauldron of, we kept saying, um, oh, what did we get? Disruption. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Disruption of how we've good things to be and what we've been told they other in each other's eyes and being like tell me your truth great let's do everything we can possibly do to make sure that we are making decisions mm-hmm. from a place that can gather all the data that can gather all the tools give us the most informed foundation so that we can support that truth as best we can. And that was a massive, I think a massive expansion point for us all. And that's just in my words. I'm so grateful for you because I don't believe in any other way I would have been given the opportunity. I've Since the retreat, I've been looking around in Europe for other places. I've only come across one and they want me to have a solo experience with Mm. two facilitators in order for this to be okayed um and for them for them to feel safe so i really understand and appreciate the huge amount of trust that you placed in me and yourself for holding that space for me and letting me live my life the way i want to live it when I witnessed when you two were back and forth the days leading up to the ceremony was so much open conversation across the board, like open conversation between the two of you. Bernadette was coming back and sharing with me as well. And like, I know Zena, you were in conversation with your husband and the open conversation across the board. There was no avoidance around your brain tumor and the reality of like you you are living with a brain tumor there's a brain tube like a tumor on your brain that's a part of your body we're not we're not avoiding that we're not not talking about that we're comfortable to have that discussion and we have to be and we're also not avoiding the intuitive part of all of us it doesn't even I don't know if intuition is even the right word it's like this deeper knowing which you could say is intuition but there was something else at play in a very embodied sense just saying intuition doesn't quite feel like it captures the embodied grounded acceptance of the situation and ultimately your personal sovereignty because what Bernadette was coming back to me and sharing was like there's just brain tumor written on the medical intake form like in no other space would that be like this would be a hard no like you said it's like my teachers like all of my training this is this is a no but this woman has been told how to handle her life and her medical situation and the choices she makes because she has a brain tumor for the last 15 years and I am not going to be another person who does that but I also have a responsibility as the facilitator and the space holder 
And like that dance of respecting your sovereignty and being a disruptor of like, even a disruptor in the medicine space, like you were just burned out, like you were disrupting in that space, you were disrupting in the mainstream medical space, you were disrupting in the way that you even engage with people who you're holding space for just in the way that you were honoring Zena's sovereignty and even like as a co-facilitator with me being like this is the first time that I'd supported you in holding that space and you're having open conversations with me about it there wasn't any hiding of like I've got this behind the scenes you're like fuck what do I do like it was open conversation across the board and I mean ultimately like what resulted out the other side of that was just you know, it's it was one of those things of like, it could have gone any way and we all knew that. And that was yeah. accepted and we've talked about it. And- Like spoken into in at length, at, at nauseam length. in fact. Yep. And I just, I really want to speak into like what Zena had said earlier around, you know, doing all the due diligence, listening to the doctors, reaching out, understanding where you were um in terms of like the prognosis and just what was going on with you um as a result of your journey knowing your body in such an intricate way because you've been doing this dance with it for 15 years you know immediately when it comes on it's here here you know it speaking with your husband at length all of us speaking but to your point earlier about you were in a medical facility feeling like a guinea pig giving in mystery drugs that maybe yeah. and you add that into the mix in addition to like my relationship to these medicines and my personal trust and relationship with them these aren't mystery drugs you know these are natural that come from the earth and there's something to be said about that piece as well. Um, and so when this became no longer a hard no, but rather a collaboration of like, great, we have a team now around you. What does that look like? Let's sit with it. What what feels comfortable for everyone? Because like I, mean, I said, like you were literally in front of me being like, I'm fully aware of the worst case scenario and I'm also holding the vision for what I'm here to receive and like feel that. And, you know, mm -hmm. as a facilitator, when someone is looking at you and that is, that is your, that is your role is to hold the container for the person and trust their personal sovereignty and not insert yourself into the equation. What one bit while at the same time knowing you are absolutely inserted into the equation because of the, we'll say yeah. the potential risk of this one. Um, it's a dance and it really was, it was a collaboration and it was massively expansive for us, all three of us in ways that I still like until this conversation, like it's been a while since I've like felt it, right? um yeah yeah there's a freedom in allowing yourself to trust another's sovereignty and freedom that I I didn't I didn't fully understand until that retreat so yeah, yeah. thank you for I also that. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely expanded together mm. yeah I have such clear memories like ultra vivid memories of that evening but I also want to say that um, the way we decided to proceed was very specific to my comfort and your comfort in the scenario. So we took it very slow. Um, and very it, slow. each step through was a check-in. How are you feeling? Do you want to proceed? Um, and I was really, really conscious in those moments. How am I feeling? Despite everything else that might be going on inside me, how am I physically going? Am I comfortable? Do I feel safe? And every time it was like, I don't need to proceed. There's nothing stopping me from going to my bed and having a shower and just calling it quits. 
So every time I was like, how am I feeling? Yeah, I feel comfortable. I feel good. And then communicating that to you. Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel good? If you feel safe with this, I want to proceed and go further and go further. And meant a completely different journey than the other participants were experiencing. But I feel so blessed for, for the whole thing. So it wasn't like, yeah, I, I'm so glad that I could communicate to you my level of comfort and ease that I had internally and spiritually um, and in my heart around the whole ceremony and how I felt going into it. I felt like this is safe, I'm safe. And I was checking it all the time. Even getting on the plane coming to you guys. I was like, what's gonna go on here? I've been in so many situations where I have felt unsafe and I know those feelings. Um, and so many situations where I can feel something coming in the future and know, oh, I'm not going there. I'm gonna stay home today. My children are gonna stay home today because I don't feel like they're even safe. I don't know, but so I had, I have a deep sense of, is it okay? Am I okay? And I was able to communicate that to you and you were like, all right, let's go ahead then. I think yeah. that's a core, what you just touched on there is a core reason why like we did go ahead with the ceremony was because you've established that relationship with yourself and that self-trust. Like it's to even to even be in a place to, I don't want to say this. I think like as facilitators, for someone to say, I trust myself and my body feels like, you know, this is a yes and I feel safe okay, how, how refined is that? Like what, yeah. what has really gone into establishing that trust and that level of embodiment and also like it would be easy to be really excited about the experience to really want a particular outcome and to override an internal sense of actually I don't feel quite safe. I feel like that's a very fine line to toe, especially when we like we really particularly want a certain outcome and also especially when um, like one way of interpreting the work of like Joe Dispenza and this consciousness expansion, like think more of attraction world. Okay, well, I'll just think and manifest the best case outcome that I want. And so I'm just going to keep aligning my actions with that and with that and with that. But like, actually, there's an internal part that's saying, I'm not ready or I don't feel safe or the time's not quite yet. So I guess to continue elaborating on your journey in more of a specific way and moving on from the retreat and the ceremony a little bit, how do you navigate that in light of this like consciousness expansion world within yourself can you like clarify the question a little bit more i'm not entirely sure. yeah so like towing towing the line of i really want a particular outcome i'm really excited about something or i really want to be better or i really want to manifest that this brain tumor disappears like i really want that outcome and not overriding what's actually happening in your body and like yeah. really aligning your intention with your body. It feels like it's hard to kind of put in words, but you you feel very embodied in when you say, I know that this is safe for me. I'm checking in, I'm checking in. It feels good. It feels good. Like how, how do you know that it really feels good? And how do you know that you're not just overriding that because you want a particular outcome? Yeah. Um, well, I guess what comes up for me is a couple of things. One, that um, that early wave of the law of attraction um, was pretty harsh towards people or felt pretty harsh. The message was pretty harsh towards people with chronic illness. It was more like a message of this is happening to you because you did this to yourself. You did this to yourself and you just need to buck up and focus on the positive and um, 
and, and then you'll be well and then you will live and then you know this is all this is your fault basically um so that area of the law of attraction is something i touched into and felt how shallow it was and how lacking in empathy compassion love and like an understanding of the experience of being human it was um it kind of feels almost uh, mechanistic i don't know how to say it but old school in the way it thinks about the world that particular one and i understand that it's definitely based in fact but it's lacking humanism we are humans we're not robots um and all of our programming and everything that happened to me before I got a brain tumor and all the reasons why I do have a brain tumor, those I accept now. And I love the person that got wounded. I love the person that thought herself all the way into this level of illness. I love her so much. She's so fucking beautiful and she's going to cry at any moment. And <laughs> she, she has learned things beyond what she was before because of this brain tumor she would never have touched the depths of empathy that she's grown into because of her suffering um so i understand that like want and need to gaslight yourself out of reality so that you can reach this level of spirituality where you have no illness anymore and look i fixed myself and i'm i'm so amazing and uh, this kind of superhuman quality that is out there it's attainable joe dispenza talks about it he's done it himself i'm not joe dispenza <laughs> uh i'm me and i have so much more depth to my reality because i'm me and yeah um that's what came up when you talked about that. I think that buttering myself, and this is a Norwegian term, buttering, to butter yourself in forgiveness and oh, wow. uh, to butter, butter the people around you in forgiveness as well. They are also human and I, I love them for it. I may not love what they do or their actions or what happened, um, but I love, I love them for, for leading me into this path, into this world, for this specific experience. I believe that I chose it. I also believe I had some um, premonitions that it was coming. I didn't feel the shock that it was coming the way that I think I probably should have because I, I feel like I knew it was coming and I had even spoken about it much earlier in my life. Um, I don't know. Life's pretty weird. <laughs> Life's pretty weird, right? Yeah. I I don't know if that answered the question. Can you please tell me? It's great. It's perfect. Okay. It's the perfect answer to the question. And it's also, you know, it's your framework of it's it's your interpretation of the question and response too, which is the entire point of these conversations. It's like how how is a question and response flowing between two different people and then what about two other people and two other experiences and like getting to witness multiple conversations around the same topic of freedom so vastly different and deep and rich and unique to you so it's the perfect answer to the question um I want to also hear a little bit more about we'll wrap this up maybe 15 minutes but this is like um, I didn't know if we'd get here and you kind of scratch the surface and I'm like, okay, there's an opening. <laughs> Let's go. Um, your spiritual experience and your experience of the material and nature, because like from knowing you, I've witnessed you have a really deep connection with what's tangibly here and nature. And you also have a really deep and open connection to what's really tangible in here that might not necessarily be physical. Like you said, the almost like premonition of kind of having this sense of knowing that it was coming. So 
I don't know, I guess I just want to hear you talk a little bit more of your experience because this is the thing, actually. We've talked about this a little bit and it's like when we talk about our spiritual experiences or encounters or worldviews, it also has felt like there's been this edging forward in both of us of like, this might sound a bit weird, but I do see things this way or I feel things this way or experience things in this way. And as both of us have done that, like, I don't know, it just uncovers more and more of like, yes, that's also, I feel a lot of resonance with what you share around the spirit, your spiritual experiences and to just have you like share whatever comes up around how you experience that, your connection with nature and the spiritual realms, I think will help people hopefully it will help others who maybe feel a little closet spiritual and and I'm saying spiritual in the sense of like like the shit that goes on that we don't see that we know is there but do we know it's there and is that just me and is anyone else feeling that like this that sort of thing and if there's resonance in that like for me definitely there has been with you and it's it's given me more permission to embrace that part of so that's the reason for the question and this part of the conversation. So I don't really know what specific question to ask around it. I guess I just want to know, like, yeah, what is your experience with nature? And it's all the same. Well, <laughs> yeah. Interesting question. I don't know how to approach it. I'm just going to jump in. But right. um, perfect. I, it, <laughs> I guess that um, I live next to a wildlife reserve. It's about 10 kilometers square. And I suddenly found myself not working and my children would go off to school and my humble husband would go off to work. And then I would be like, guess I'm going out um, with a migraine, without a migraine every single day. I would like climb these mountains alone. Um, and I wouldn't say that before this, I was a spiritual person. I would say maybe I was probably... Um, denying it very very hard as coincidence and just like yeah that happens to everybody kind of thing um, but I think years of walking alone in the forest um, trying to say very simple basic mantras especially when I was in pain um, over and over again so my m mind gets really quiet and it's not talking to me at all sometimes the mantra will just fall away and I'm not consciously thinking anymore which which is just wonderful <laughs> um and that allowed me to understand different states of consciousness in a really tangible way and understand the difference between my own thoughts and thoughts that arrive or thoughts that are given um, more than I had ever experienced before. So they're kind of interlinked, being sick, going out, trying to calm my mind. Um, the mantras would often be about the pineal gland and about whatever I was experiencing at the time. Like I am capable of healing might be one. I am capable of healing and I can heal. And I would just say that for the entire walk, it might be two and a half hour walk. Um, anyway, that allowed me to tap into prophetic dreams I was feeling because there's a quality to them and I could recognize that quality this is not my dream this is not a product of my own mind but it's a product that has been given and I can see them clearly now I'm sort of trained myself slowly to understand the different qualities of experience that I was having and yeah also how to communicate and get responses from that realm as well that slowly that slowly arrived over time yeah um <laughs> yeah but also in trying not to be ashamed about it trying not to gaslight myself and say oh no no that just happened that's got that's just coincidence that means nothing that's nothing um you know it's so so western of us to completely disregard anything we're feeling and be like oh yeah, it's just time to get my coffee and, and go through the motions of living. We're so indoctrinated into thinking that that's woo-woo 
That means that you should be very careful that you don't end up in a mental institution. Don't tell people about the things you're seeing. Um, don't tell them about the vibrations in that church and how you feel like they're not very good. <laughs> you know, you should be, you need to be very careful, but I've tried to be more open and more willing to share because I feel like other people, once they see you sharing about it, maybe they want to open up about something that they're sharing about. And, yeah. Or even just validate to themselves, like you said, rather than gaslighting ourselves out of it, just at least have the space within ourselves. Not at least, it doesn't feel like the right word, but like as a starting point, how about we just start with give myself the space to even consider. Yeah, yeah. actually that is something I'm feeling. Or like that is a dream I had. And yeah, that did actually feel different to the other dreams that I've had or the dreams that I usually have. Like there's a different quality to that and allowing yeah. that to be there and accepting it and getting curious about like, okay, well, what is that quality? What is that frequency? And I want to ask you as well, with your relationship with your body, how can you like, can you try to put into words the process of, or the experience of, feeling these things in your body mm. um so feeling those different states what it feels like yeah different states different frequencies like the essence of something or the quality of something being like you said I this think, feels prophetic or this yeah. yeah i think that really um for me it it uh is a, a sense of quietness almost like somebody's gone shh and then my brain has stopped and I'm I guess maybe I fall into a receptive state or I'm put in a receptive state so it's sort of some um and in in the body it can feel like chills like I've got them right now um it can feel it can feel like deep re relaxation very deeply relaxed um yeah it depends on if I'm awake or asleep um but yeah but it definitely my mind has to stop being stop whirring away on its little rat wheel there's like at least 10 rats up there so and then suddenly I'm quiet and then something's given out of stillness it's not that my mind has worked myself there I could be directed towards a thought but it's it's more still it's a still mm -hmm. state of receptivity mm -hmm. yeah it and it's like also got it go it's on. also not grasping I'm not grasping at it I'm not like now I'm going to be psychic and I'm going to tell everybody how psychic I am it's more like I'm just here and I'm gonna see you know because there's there's also that we could go on tv and have our own tv shows and be you know, <laughs> playing it, right it's so it's so commodified as well it's like oh uh, if, if you're really good at this you could have a huge following on instagram sell a lot of books or something or something <laughs> what? oh that's why I love you so much <laughs> This is like <laughs> the depth and the awareness and like you're actually super spiritual and tapped in and you're also <laughs> super human, super human, really human and grounded and here and see through the bullshit. Like, is that really what we're here to experience? Selling lots of books and having a TV show and a big following. And for some people it is. Some people, yeah. that's their bag in this lifetime. And yeah. to have the this to be have the ability to then like have the stillness, sit in the stillness, not run and jump out of the stillness straight away because it's scary and uncomfortable, but build the muscle of staying in the stillness to actually listen and receive like what is actually for me. Mm -hmm. Feels like that's yeah kind of what you've summed up in this conversation and like you said around the freedom at the beginning of the conversation you said it was freedom from your mind and it's like freedom from the rats running around up there and the wheels spinning and then like 
the stillness and the freedom and the stillness and the quiet and the space to choose your thoughts or to stay quiet and receive. I go for a walk in the woods and repeat a mantra for two and a half hours. Like, I don't know if you understand, but I don't think many people can do that. I don't think I would be able to repeat a mantra for two and a half hours. I think I would forget after 40 seconds and yeah, start that thinking. Happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. That happens. Suddenly you I'm know like, what I mean? planning. Though, like, I don't, yeah, I'm sure it happens, but I just want to, like you've really, you've really strengthened that ability to maintain the freedom in your. I don't even know if mind is the right word. It feels like psyche. Does that feel? Yeah. Can you imagine if I didn't have brain tumor? Well, that's the other thing. I would just be a regular girl. Yeah, going to work. I and mean, like your relationship with your husband and your kids and life and nature and everything. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be the person I am today without it. And I don't say that flippantly, and I don't say that to just guess like myself and to like everything's roses and I'm so grateful. But I am grateful. I'm so grateful for all of the experiences, even the terrifying ones, because it's it has taught me a depth that I didn't know before. So, yeah, I'm. I'm I don't know how to express that more honestly because I do feel like people throw that shit around. Gratitude for a brain tumor. Oh, she's just an inspiration kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's real. I am yeah. grateful for this experience. So. The frequency of your words carry that. And I want to just say, like, this is something I've been exploring a lot. This whole, like, you know, when we're in the depths of things and how easy it is to fall into the collapse of those times, right? And then there's also on the flip, flip side of it, it's what, you know, I know that it's moving me in the direction of the next iteration of myself. And I, you know, again, I'm not trying to say that flippantly either. How because you're not allowing yourself to be in the soup of what is right now, right? It's this is what's happening right now. And you can hold both, but allow yourself to fully move through the experience of what needs to be moved through now fully. So you're not carrying any of the residue so that you can move on to the next breath. And I think that is the difference between your experience and some stories that you come across where it's like, I'm so grateful, mm -hmm. hashtag brain tumor. You know what I mean? It's like, it's felt and it's been lived and there is no, there's no bullshit here. It's like, you've been in the trenches, you have been in the claps, you've picked yourself up, you've allowed yourself to expand in the experience. And mm -hmm. in each breath, it has moved you into a different frequency as you've put it so beautifully that it's truth. You know, it doesn't have the residue of like stickiness or staticky. It's just like, I've been there, babe. I've, I've moved through it. So this is where we are now. Full, full embrace of the journey, full embrace of where I'm at, able to see with clear eyes of where it's, where it's brought me, be able to accept fully what my life is and what it isn't. Um, and how expansive and free is that? I mean, I don't know that yeah. it gets more free than that. <laughs> <laughs> truly yeah. yeah absolutely thank you yeah I, I really hope that well I I don't, I don't know what to say right now but um I think I want to say that I'm so grateful because of the depth because of the depth of the experience like what would my life be without it I have no idea yeah yeah, and it and it's changed how I'm a mother. It's changed how I'm a wife. It's changed how I interact with grumpy people. <laughs> Just anything that comes my way, I'm like, yeah, I can hold that. I can hold that. I can hold. I can hold pretty much a lot. I can hold a lot right now. I'm not saying I could hold everything, but I'm saying I could hold a lot. And I I actually have a a really good friend who gets sent out. Um, as an emergency gynecologist to war zones. 
And she's like, oh, can we have a coffee? When she comes back immediately, she like trauma dumps, horrific shit. And I'm like, I can tell totally that. <laughs> I doesn't, I doesn't face me anymore. I'm like, please cry, please express yourself if you need to talk it through. I don't know. I, I feel blessed to have that safe space, like Amy said, safe space for others. Yeah. Yeah, I think when we've held ourselves through some pretty big shit and big is relevant to all of us individually. Like we've held the big shit within ourselves. Like the capacity is there to hold big shit for others. And also the sovereignty and the choice is there. Like there's also a time and place and some days it's not the day. Yeah. But some days it is the day. And like to have the choice means that I can choose like, and no, I can hold space for you. I can hold space for that. Right now might not be the time or yep, now's the time and I'm good to go and I've got all the space in the world. We can make the sovereign choice and it comes back to the inside job of like, have we held that space for ourselves? Yeah. 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 I'm also just, I feel this, um, I don't know, I feel this a lot with you. Like when we've, when we have conversations and we talk about your physical experience I forget that like, as we're talking, I forget that you still have a brain tumor because the way that you're talking about it is like, there's so much acceptance and sovereignty in the way that you navigate your experience. And also it never feels like you're over identifying with like, I'm Xena and I have a brain tumor. It's not that it's like, that's a part of me and a part of my experience. And I am so rich and full with various other experience yes this this part of my experience has given me deeper access to all but like look at all of this like this isn't just the only thing but because of that I sometimes forget like you're sitting here right now it's still a part of your experience and a part of your life and I know that you do still have moments of pain and like you said there's five percent moments where I need to go to hospital I need to see the doctors and it feels like it just I don't know in this moment felt like I forget, and it might be easy for people watching to forget because of the way that you hold yourself and carry yourself. And it's an encouragement for, regardless of what the thing is, it could be a brain tumor, it could be something else, like regardless of what it is, where we're sitting here listening to and watching and witnessing someone who is providing us an example of what it looks like to not be victim to that and to not over identify with that part of their experience and to live with sovereignty and choice and embodiment and agency and like carry the genuine frequency of gratitude for the experience and acceptance of the experience like this is my life I'm grateful for this being part of my life I would not be who I am today without this being part of my life I just couldn't possibly how on earth could we be who we are in this moment without every single previous experience high low whatever it is mm -hmm. to arrive here in the moment that we are with the awareness that we have and yeah even that like in the moment high low whatever it is this is like a 15 year journey that you've been on yeah and i want to say two things that i feel like um byron katie in those early years really helped me to accept my experience as it was and not to demonize it and not to put stories on top of the experience. Um, she was a breath of fresh air in the spiritual movement that I came into. So all of that, um, the secret movement, but Brian Katie was like, is it true? Is it true? Um, and that that one question allowed me to accept and get out of crisis mode and the fear, this terrible fear, like strangling me at night about my children, about like what's what was going to happen. But to step one step away, I'm here and just step one step to the side and say, is it true? That allowed me to accept 
the reality I was experiencing without words on top of it. So that was really good. But I also want to say that after my uh, experience with you guys in Wales, I came to a different, I feel like I leveled up in my acceptance <laughs> or a different level of, of acceptance, which was this experience in my life has been this experience of being ill chronically ill for a very long time in my life has been so fruitful and so fucking amazing and everything I do I feel like is heightened so other people are just going to a retreat in Wales but I'm going to a retreat in Wales and I also will be facing down death at the same time <laughs> and I'm like okay cool let's do it mm, how do you feel um but after that I was so grateful for that that I decided I don't know how to explain this so I'm just going to come right out with it but I decided that this brain tumor has been such a gift that I no longer want to, it to be anything other than it is and the will that gave me the brain tumor, I'm now going to give the brain tumor back. So basically I was like, my brain tumor is now in God's hands. I'm giving my brain tumor back to God or to God. And I'm letting God rest in the center of my brain when I think about that. I'm like, this is your domain. My body, this brain tumor is your domain because you had the foresight to give it to me. Even when I would have said, absolutely fucking not, please get that thing away from me <laughs> but god had the foresight or source had the foresight to give it to me therefore i will let god have the foresight and have the ultimate responsibility for what happens next so i'm i give it's like a next level of acceptance i feel like i came to is like and it also makes that part of my brain feel very loved and held there's so much sort of negative focus on that part of my my brain or my body or anybody's body. It's this negative focus. There is something bad there. There's something bad shouldn't be there. And it feels heavy and dense. So the moment I say, I'll let God into that part of my brain or, and feel the presence of it there and say, you are now in control. I give it to you. You know best. That That came out of being with you guys so yeah it very much feels like we created and facilitated and held this space for you to come in and facilitate yourself into that up-leveled experience yeah. and we like we all trusted each other to play our part in that and you know, you coming out of the retreat and the ceremony with that expanded, like, ex state of acceptance was an inside job. Like, that, it was, I could never have known that that's what was going to come out of the experience for you or that's what needed to come out of the experience for you. I could never have no. seen that and nor should I project any idea of what I think should come out of anyone's experience. And this was like, it's like holding the space for you to facilitate yourself safely and have a safe space and a loving space and a supported space where your sovereignty is supported. And like also tuning in around how deep does that run? Yeah. The whole mix of things, but you facilitated yourself through that experience. And yeah. I'm, but I remember you guys so clearly through the experience yeah I, we just I, yeah <laughs> I do I remember oh my gosh guys oh. so much. <laughs> but um I think you and I have talked recently about um facilitating safe space and making sure that that is a pure that people are surrounded by pure energy when they're stepping out of their physicality and into these other dimensions um and you guys held it you really held it um Bernadette specifically in my mind was a fiery angel 
<laughs> dancing around the room, just being like, but, but also with joy and like a little bit of a down to earth kind of uh, vibe going on. We're going to laugh at ourselves. We're going to have a great time. This is the vibe we're in right now. This is fun. This is fun. But also I'm going to dance and I'm going to that gong vibrating through my whole body. And we are going to keep this space sacred that the vibration of joy is one that can keep that vibration where it needs to be. So. Yeah. A really beautiful reflection. We've been talking about spiritual guardianship a lot lately and up leveling that and I guess just more specifically like I know Bernadette for you to hear that reflection and know that you were holding that energy at that time in that space with your joy and your laughter and your grounded down to earth fiery angel essence like it's it's there mm -hmm. thank you yeah. for protecting the space yeah. Yeah. Right. Very special. Oh, it's super special. Thanks for reflecting that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important to have a down to earth like perspective on it as well. It's really easy to make yourself super serious and everything's got to be I mean, <laughs> don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was going. I, mean, I didn't know if I could like should, like should speak into this, but I feel like yeah. probably, and that is like that is a direct result of being in so many spaces that are this or that, and I'm sitting there feeling like the crazy person, like like this, right? Like sacred doesn't necessarily need to equate to. throw out some dad jokes in the middle of ceremony, right? Like, giggle and like allow that to be a part of the soundscape and like take joy in that, right? And when there is that collective sigh because the gong has just gonged us out and it's like, <laughs> there's no more, it's just like, there's a silence that is just like, Ooh. <laughs> and we can all do that it's what are we doing here folks like yeah. we're here we're here to live and to experience and to be in it all and full permission to do that with reverence and guardianship and I have a lot to say yeah. about it I'm just gonna leave it there <laughs> Well, conversation you because have. that is something that I value deeply when I think of every single facilitator I've ever sat with, with every mentor, with every medicine person. It is the one that brings in the levity, it brings in the play, it brings in the joy, it leaves space for that expression. Um, mm -hmm. because we need that, you know. Mm -hmm. It would be like saying like to bring it back to the beginning wrapping it nicely up in a bow It'd be like saying tears are not allowed here it would be like saying anger is not allowed in this space to say that joy and like silliness mm. is not allowed in this space it's like saying oh that part of being human is not allowed you're not allowed to be all of your own human here no totally yeah but and that's just not sense. what the container is it's as facilitators, we are creating and holding this container for you to fill it up with all of your human experience. And it's all welcome here. And it is safe to be here. And it is safe to be expressed and felt and moved through and interacted with and released or expressed. And mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. want that for all of us. You know, I just want that for everyone. I just want that for all of us. I want, you know what? I want that for all children as well. I want them to exactly. go through. Exactly. I mean, that's life. yeah, yeah, exactly. And be like, I can be silly. Some of the like a eulogy where I'm laughing and giggling at a, at a funeral. 
It's the best yeah. fucking eulogy on the planet. Yeah. Bring it in. I don't know why I'm talking about eulogies, guys. I, it's because we need it's a Halloween. It's Halloween and we it's going dark here. Oh. I'm losing sunlight. I know. Uh, light above me here. Um, oh. but it's also I yeah, that death was another part of the conversation that we didn't quite get to, but we need to do this again to <laughs> Yeah. Part two. Rabbit hole. There's plenty more conversations to be had. Oh but my I, gosh. Just... I just real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still processing that piece that you mentioned. And I've been sitting here thinking about like, do I want to verbally process in real time? And I don't know that I need to verbally process in real time, but I do want to like just presence the impact that it had on me when you were talking about, you reached a point of acceptance of your diagnosis, of having lived with it, the journey with it that you've had. And then as a result of that, but the continuation of the work, you reached a point where you were able to actually excavate that still that sneaky tendril that me and Amy talk about this all the time, the sneaky resonance that still like made this part of your brain wrong or bad or something's wrong with it. And so you were able to unlock that and fully release that to where now it's, it's, I'm trying to like put the words around it. It's like, it's not acceptance. It's almost like it's a surrender. It's like, surrender I am now like surrendering the identity that this mm-hmm. needs to be anything other than it is. And that mm-hmm. now I can just like absolutely love it fully. And it's mm-hmm. just, I love when we can catch the sneaky bits because those are the parts that keep us captive. And when we do it, man, now that is a special kind of freedom. So thank you for sharing that part because man, <laughs> there, babe. When, when I think right, about that's it. it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> no, no, what you were going to say, Lena? Yeah, I feel like you're right. It was a sneaky part where just a little bit of negativity was focused there. Density, I think I said as well. Negative, it was just like, this is wrong, this is bad. And may not have been saying those words to myself, but it was there. But now when I think about it, I feel like it's a sacred space within my body. It's actually a sacred point where the light touches now. So it, it yeah. makes it clean. It makes it clear. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And those are, those are the parts that are the most difficult to die, like to like find, right. It's like 99%, but if there's still those little sneaky tendrils or staticky parts that are even getting a little bit of your energy, it's still, it's not completely clear. Mm-hmm. so right beautiful yeah it feels like Amy, you, you really are turning dark there babe i know i'm going i'm <laughs> leaning into the um, laptop yeah. screen so i get the white light for the participants panel on my face nice <laughs> in front of me is just like a full garage door there's no light in front of me except for sunlight and now the sunlight's disappearing and it's turning into nighttime and i'm okay with that halloween baby Mm -hmm. um yeah just like I guess for you to even be given the permission by yourself by everyone involved to partake in the ceremony feels like that in and of itself was like a massive validation of like that brain tumor is allowed to be there Mm -hmm. we're not gonna wrong it or push it out or like nope you're not welcome here welcome here too yeah. all of you is welcome here too yeah. brain tumor and all all of you is welcome here yeah and that's been your message to me since the very beginning that all of me is welcome but yeah there's so many circumstances where I'm sidelined I feel sidelined from um, a career I feel sidelined from many different things in life so yeah to not be sidelined for this is feels really like a blessing you got so much to add yeah i'm very very grateful to know you (laughs) so cool thank you for letting me in to like being your friend 
It's like, nice to be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. Yeah, I don't let loads of people in in the way that you and I are in yeah, each me. other's lives. Yeah, same with Bernadette. And it's just because I'm also like deep and sensitive and I need to really trust people. And I need to really trust myself that I can be all of myself as well. And it's not a numbers thing of like how many people in my circle. It's a frequency thing of how much space is there in this relationship with this person to be all parts of myself and express any given part of myself authentically when that's the authentic thing to share and express. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that I want to spend my time with <laughs> and like in um a non-egotistical way like get the privilege of knowing me get the privilege of seeing me and getting to experience me and vice versa like I feel like it's such a deep privilege to know literally every single one of you who's on this call right now because you're all really deep and you've got a lot You've got a lot of depth and the depth isn't just like a deep person. It's a variety of different expressions and experiences and energetics and emotions and growth and expansion. And like ch we're changing and we're growing together. And I feel like it's a privilege to get to w witness that and be friends with you and like have, like Bernadette says, like the front row seat. <laughs> eating the popcorn I think that's a bit more of a line six thing I'm not so much eating the popcorn I'm like right in there in the relationship or in the community it is going really dark here anyway in there and in the experience and man it's it's really cool to find those relationships and connect in that way and I literally want anyone who feels like in resonance with that energy to feel safe to connect and show up as all of them and have space for all of us to show up as all of us authentically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to close this out, I almost forgot the last question. Yeah, what was that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> in your body and your felt experience in this moment, what animal and what the frequency of that animal represents freedom to you? Mm -hmm. um well thank you for asking me previously otherwise I would have <laughs> overthought it and not been able to come up with anything but a sparrow <laughs> hawk oh um, yeah because I feel like when <laughs> when I step into or if I can use a really cool word is like shape shift in my psyche into the sparrow hawk and I'm flying free in the sky and just the sovereignty to move and experience, but also the stillness of mind being so far up and soaring and feeling the wind and just the power to trust myself to be flying so high above and observing everything around me as it is. I don't know, the mm. sparrow Definitely the sparrow walk, very authentic and what's what's a word for trusting yourself? Having having trust in yourself. So yeah. Freedom. Mm -hmm. Ultimate freedom. The sparrow freedom. Walk. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, You're it's welcome. been so good to have this conversation. <laughs> All right. I want to wrap this thing in a bow. We'll update the integration guidebook tomorrow with some prompts based on this conversation and to support what might have come up in the conversation. And also like when Bernadette's been holding that part of this container and creating the questions. And I know when she does that and like when I take a look at it and we collaborate and work on it together, we're like, we're really intentionally tuning in with what those questions are and the placement of every single word and like how every single question is framed. So this isn't just like a slap together. Here's some questions go and write in your journal. This is like a deeply intentional felt connected 
experience of like, like we really tune into what was this conversation and what questions do we hope will support the integration of this conversation for those of you who are watching and witnessing the conversation. So that's a level of intentionality going into that. And that's it from us. <laughs> oh, deep breaths, big stretches. I'm going to go turn some lights on. Or maybe I won't because it's Halloween. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Sina. Oh, I feel grateful to be able to talk about it. And people who want to listen to it as well. Not everybody is like, how is it a brain tumor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody wants to know, hear that story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, look, we're talking about it. We're talking about the stuff that it's, <sighs> doesn't always get space held. I think we yeah, can space for all of it. It's comforting. You know, I don't think everyone, I don't think, I don't think collectively people are good at comfortable. Yeah. It's not, it's their discomfort that they can't hold as a result of that. Mm. Um, yeah. Oftentimes. And then there's also the piece of like, they want to be mindful of like, they don't know where you are in your journey. Mm -hmm. So there's that delicate nature too, right? So yeah. yeah. It's just back to the they whole like, let it, all, let it all be welcome and like, let's just get real because that's really the piece is like enough with the fluff enough with like the uh the pomp and circumstance like let's just like let's bring it all to the table yeah yeah and we've got to hold ourselves to be able to even do that and not be spilling a big fucking mess on the table yeah so here's to the inner work holding yeah. ourselves showing up hell, honestly and vulnerably and authentically <clears throat> all right mm -hmm. let's close this thing out Sina. Love thanks Sina you welcome we'll have another call which will be Emily next which I Emily. made the mistake of in the last call I thought it was Emily this time around it wasn't Emily's next and then we've got a conversation with Rachel as well but yeah after we finish watching this recording or like close the laptop or the screen or whatever for those watching now or like us here just present let's go like grab a drink of water and stretch and reintroduce ourselves to the world around like what's changed and shift shifted in the last hour and a <laughs> half two hours i have no lights on <laughs> get our bearings take care of our physical needs go for a walk if we need to like let this conversation land in our bodies and then yeah move on with the rest of the day or evening ahead of us I'm sending you all so much love and gratitude thank you hmm. bye georgia see you georgia <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, face it.